Okay, we are still working with Steve. I know, my fans are getting worse. Steve still has a radius of two feet. He is still... The center line is still 2.5 feet off the table. And it's still taking him... He's still traveling at a speed of 2 pi over 3 radians per second. But now, Steve is landing in the 12 o'clock position. Meaning, we can label things just as we did above. We're going from 0 to 3 for one full rotation. And our important points are 4.5, 2.5, and 0.5. But now we're going to start at 4.5, and then come down to 2.5, 0 0.5, and so on and so forth. Which gives us a graph that actually looks a great deal like a cosine graph, because we're starting at the top. And in fact, we find that we can write this in a number of different ways. One way is to stay with a sine function, where we say that h, which is a function of time, will still be 2 times the sine of 2 pi over 3. And what we find is basically what Steve has done is he's jumped ahead by 0.75 seconds. So we could do t plus 0 0.75 or we can write this as 2 sine and we can distribute the 2 pi over 3 which gives us 2 pi 3 t plus pi over 2 because essentially what Steve has also done is jumped ahead pi over 2 radians. The important thing to know is just if you're going to mess with the time, have it t plus or minus in the parentheses. If you're messing with angle measure, no parentheses within the parentheses. The other way to reason this through is that if we did have our original sine graph, This red one is basically taking the original graph and shifting it 0.75 units to the left. And remember our transformations, when we shift to the left, we add that value to our input. Okay, here's what I see easier way to write this function. H equals, we'll say, K of T. Since we know the red one starts at the top, let's just make it a cosine function. We still have the same amplitude, the same angular speed, and the same vertical shift. But what you saw above, with these two different ways, either adding 0.75 or pi over 2, this is called your phase shift, or it's your horizontal shift. And what it does is it changes where we start. This leads us to a wonderful summary of the parts of a trig function. So every trig function is going to be written as A times the trig function. In this case, I just use sine. Parentheses B times the input plus C plus D. A is your amplitude. This is the distance. And actually, I'm going to sum this all up in the next clip. 